My friends at Clawhammer Supply have sent me something new for my brew kettle. That gives me the opportunity to try an experiment with an overnight mash as I brew a Belgian double. My name is Martin Keane, taking the homebrew challenge to brew 99 beers in 99 weeks. And I am revisiting the idea of an overnight mash. I really like this because it splits the brew day up into two manageable chunks. On day one, you have the initial mash, which really doesn't take very long at all. You just set it and forget it. And then the next day, you've got your already mashed wort ready for the boil. But the way that I'm gonna address this today is with a bit of a different method. The way I usually do this is with my trusty temperature controller. I set the temperature I want the mash to stay at and then the heating element is cycled on and off by this controller to keep the mash at that temperature. And let me tell you, it works really well. I've tried it overnight. Next morning I was exactly at the mash temperature I wanted to be. And I've even tried it over the course of, I think, was it three days when I was kettle souring a beer? Worked like a charm. But today, I'm not going to use the temperature controller to maintain my temperature overnight. I'm going unplugged. So let's talk about the style of Belgian Dubel because it's such a wonderfully complex Abbey Ale. It potentially can have all sorts of malt flavors. You might have burnt sugar, citrus, dark fruit, clove, all sorts of stuff that can be in there. And the beer that I'm brewing today has an original gravity of hopefully a 1069 and it will be around about a 7% beer. Now this is a somewhat complex tasting beer it comes with a somewhat complex grist. The base malt for this, making up 67% of my mash, is two-row Belgian pale malt. Into that, I am adding 7% of Carapils, 7% of Caravienna, and 7% of wheat malt. In addition, I have 4% of aromatic malt, and then the remaining fermentable sugars, well, they are coming from dark Belgian candy syrup, D90, that makes up 8%. Now, if I just left my kettle here in the basement overnight, well, the ambient temperature in here is not warm and it's going to cool fairly rapidly, I think. So that is where this insulation jacket comes in. So this is a neoprene jacket. It's designed for the 10 gallon kettle from Clawhammer Supply. And it's uh, nice and easy to put on. It's just a little bit of Velcro. So let's get it on now. So I've just got this Velcro seal here. And close it up. There we go. Jacket installed. Now it does come with a bottom as well, which is just loose. So you put this on the table and make sure that we're not going to really lose any heat through transference into this table here. Okay, this is uh, ready to make beer. Now I've preheated my strike water to 158 Fahrenheit, so about 70 Celsius. I'm actually mashing at 152, that's my main mash temperature, or 67 Celsius, but um, adding these not hot grains into this water should cool it down somewhat. So let's get these in. Now this idea of overnight mashing, well, it's not really the primary intended purpose for this jacket. 
What this really is intended for is 120 volt systems, mine is 240 volt, um, but just being able to more easily get to a mash temperature and then maintain a rigorous boil. Having this insulation around it should help speed up those times. Now Emmett from Clawhammer tells me that this neoprene material is really easy to keep clean. The way he's been doing it is just tossing it into the washing machine. He says he's put his in the washing machine 10 times and it's come out looking great. So nice and easy to maintain. If you take a look at the temperature now, it has dropped to 152. I've given it a really good stir. So now I'm gonna put the lid on. Now the lid itself doesn't have any insulation with it. It also has this big gaping hole here. I'm just gonna plug in my hose to the pump, even though I'm not running the pump, uh, just to block that off and stop air getting in. And, and that is the other point. This is a recirculating brew in the bag system and I'm gonna be doing no recirculating for this mash. I'm literally just going to leave this in here and tomorrow I'm gonna come back, take a gravity reading temperature reading and see where we are. Good morning. So while I've been sleeping, my mash tun has been mashing. So how did it do? Well, for the first hour, I took temperature readings every 10 minutes. So we started at 152 Fahrenheit and 10 minutes later, the temperature had dropped to 151 Fahrenheit. 20 minutes in, well, now we are at 149 Fahrenheit and 30 minutes at 148 Fahrenheit. So we've lost four degrees in 30 minutes. Now, most of the mesh conversion does happen in that first 20 or 30 minutes. So during that period, I was mashing between 152 and 148, pretty good. I came down this morning to see that I'm down to just under 86 degrees. But how did I do with conversion? Well, I have taken a gravity reading and Beersmith tells me that I should be at 1056 as my expected pre-boil gravity based on my usual efficiency with this system. I'm at 1054. That's close enough for me. So now I'm gonna pull out the grains and go straight into the bowl this morning. While that's heating up to boil temperature, let me talk about the hop schedule for this. I'm gonna be using two hops. So for my bittering hop, I'm going to be using Halatel Herzbrucker. This is relatively low alpha acid, actually pretty damn low alpha acid. We're not really looking for a lot of hop bite in this beer. So this will go in at the start. Then with 10 minutes to go, that is when I am going to my old favorite Styrian Golding. I've been using that in so many Belgian beers. Uh, so that will go in with 10 minutes to go and that's also the time that I'll be adding in my dark candy syrup. Well, transferred in to my fermenter and I took a gravity sample. I'm at 1070. It's really where I wanted to be. I was looking at 1069. So this has worked out pretty well, I think. What will be interesting is to check on the final gravity of this beer, because sometimes when you mash at lower temperatures, you end up with a drier beer, so a, a lower final gravity. We shall see. But we're not gonna have any gravity at all until we add one more thing, that is the yeast. So I am using here white yeast 1214, Belgian, Abbey style ale. And I'm gonna let this one get as warm as about 70 Fahrenheit or 21 Celsius. You know, there's a, a lot to be said for the fact that it's ATM right now. I'm done with my brew day. Wow. 
what would you say our uh, most favorite descriptor has been on the recent beer tastings? Oh, um, malty, biscuity. I feel like a complex is coming. Complex, yeah. The last couple ones that we've had, probably the last like seven to ten, have all been quite complex. So yeah, I gotta say we've probably been using that a lot. Yeah, I think this is this is possibly gonna hit that that as well. Okay, let's see what we think about the color of this. Ooh. Yeah, look at that. Well, that is definitely different to the the single mm. because I feel like that was more golden yellow. I'm not good with color names, but is this ruby? Ah. Um, yeah, kind of. I was going to say it, it looked like cranberry juice. Cranberry. <laughs> cranberry is a color? I don't know. Dark red, yellow, orange. It's a lot. Complex colors. Oh, the colors are complex. <laughs> we're, we're in for a treat today. Okay. Um, I'm getting a little bit of Belgian sweetness, I think. All right. Let's try it. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. What does that mean? Ooh. Um... Ooh, it tastes, it tastes quite, it tastes strong, but it tastes very, very smooth. Yeah, smooth, it, it's um, definitely got that malt sort of character to it. Yeah, smooth, smooth character too. Very smooth, and I do taste a bit of the sweetness, um, but also dry as well. Mm. I know saying sweet and dry uh, to the opposite ends yeah. of the spectrum. I, but I think I'm getting sweetness from the maltiness, but yeah, the, it is a dry finish. It tastes a bit like fruity, but not like a crazy fruit. It's more like an apricot kind of taste. Mm. That makes any sense. Yeah, I think the style is supposed to support sort of dried fruit kind of. So I think with the last week's beer, the, the single, we thought there was maybe a bit of sort of citrusy flavors to mm -hmm. it. This is not that, right? This is no. this is a uh, no citrus. Yeah, more of a dried fruit thing. So, yeah, you said mm. apricot. I could see that. Honestly, I couldn't be happier with this one. I think for the, the star, this has come out around the money. Yep, I, I agree. This is definitely one that I'll probably have another one of these later. And on that note, if you'd like to have a go at brewing this yourself, the description has the recipe. And uh, yeah, we're staying with the Belgian Trappist style ales for next week. But uh, uh, next week's a special one for me. Until then. Okay. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. <laughs>